Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll have a look at the GFS, the GM, the ECMDF, the GFS and ECMDF ensembles and then we'll finally have a look at the UK Met Office precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now we've been talking about easterly winds coming up into March and we are now officially out of meteorological winter. And those easterly winds are still looking quite likely uh, in the next sort of five to seven days. It's longevity of those, which is really still up in the air, as we'll see with the model today. Some are continuing it for a good three, four, five days, others only one or two. And that can make drastic differences as the longer the easterly wind holds, the more cold air spreads in. And it means the more likelihood we're going to see lower temperatures and maybe some wintriness with it as well. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do start by having a look at the live radar, you can see we have heavy rain pushing into the south, a big band of persistent, moderate rain, some heavier pulses within it, but generally most of it is moderate to light. It is going to be miserable, regardless of the intensity of the rain though, uh, of course. But luckily it isn't going too far northwards, it is really staying across southern Wales, central southern England and into parts of East Anglia and the south Midlands and over the coming hours it should spread through eastwards. So hopefully, uh, unlikely, will clear by the morning. So yeah, not looking great. But elsewhere further northwards it's not been too bad of a day, temperatures around 10 degrees and uh, some sunshine around but many areas have clouded over as this weather front has pushed northwards. Now if we do have a look at the GFS you can see is this little low pressure system just into the far south of the country that's producing this rainfall and it will eventually push through and this low but high pressure starts pulling easterly winds by the weekend and you can see we are starting to put in a cold air mass. Temperatures down towards freezing if not lower than that um, overnight in a few areas and we do start to pull in maybe some wintry showers with a little low pressure system there some cold air but it's not a quite as vigorous of, a, uh, of an easterly as we were seeing maybe a few days ago or even yesterday in some of the runs for eventually it does disappear and we do see the weather fronts out the Atlantic with low pressure tumbling back in off the Atlantic but as we'll see with some other runs in a minute they hold on to this easterly for a little bit longer and that's something that we really do need to keep an eye on because as I said the longevity and intensity of this easterly wind can make drastic differences towards the surface. So we do now have a look at the GEM run, see how that does compare. Again, you can see the small little low pressure system to our south. It does move in, and then we do see easterly winds. Again, not quite as, uh, as potentially severe and long lasting as other runs were showing. And eventually we do see westerly winds break back in. It would be at least a little bit of a settling down, and we would see some cold weather, especially overnight, it's for a couple of days, but nothing too significant from the GEM to, uh, run today. Beyond that, though, generally staying on the colder side of the jet stream, but again, I still wouldn't be particularly cold with that as we are heading into March, of course, with the sun strength getting a little bit milder. Uh, with sun strength sort of getting uh, stronger, it means it gets a little bit milder, regardless, really, of the upper air temperatures. Now, if we do have a look at the ECM WF, see how that does compare. Again, you see high pressure develop over and to the top and to our east, and we do start to pull in an easterly wind. Now, you can see really cold just to our east, but it never quite makes its way in. So, all the runs still showing a Scandinavian high, still showing some sort of easterly wind, but the severity of those easterly winds are very much dependent on each run. We'll have a look at the ensembles in a minute, and you'll see that those are still going quite cold. So perhaps the operational run today may be trending a little bit milder, but there's still the general consensus is seeing a colder easterly flow. Beyond that, we do start to see westerly to southwesterly winds um, grabbing up some milder air up from the Azores. Again, if we did see the high pressure to our east build over the top of the UK, dragging up more of a southerly wind, then we could be going quite mild, if not warm as we head into the middle part of March. But I do suspect March will be a very much an up and down month, regardless of what we see a full-blown easterly come on in the next few days, uh, in the next week or so, really. I do think it will turn at least a little bit chillier frosts. But of course, you can see by some of these synoptics, if you just start seeing south or southwesterly winds, I wouldn't be surprised to see mid to high teens, if not maybe 20 degrees, as we head into uh, into uh, the start of meteorological spring. Um, so yeah, it could be a very up and down, topsy-turvy month incoming. 
So we do now have a look at the GFS Ensembles. Now you can see mild at the moment, but dropping away quite significantly over the next three or four days to around minus five end drift HPA by the weekend. Now the longevity is very much in question. See, maybe a third of the runs stay pretty cold for a good few days beyond maybe the 7th of March. However, we do still see quite a few, maybe about half to two thirds, return to around average within two or three, four days with the, with the sleigh wind arriving. And that includes the operational run there. So you can see perhaps uh, the majority of the ensembles uh, perhaps uh, looking maybe at just a brief easily win two or three days before turning a little bit milder and staying around uh, staying mild and you can see there's quite a, a decent precipitation signal around the 10th to the 13th of March and that could be those low pressures rumbling back in off the Atlantic you can still there are still see quite a few going much much colder but in the longer term no real cold or mild signal generally around average it's not looking too bad but not uh, not looking amazing either whether you're a cold or, or a mild warmer um, uh, warmer fan looking for some sort of spring sunshine now if we look at the ECMWF interestingly today if we have a look at midnight run ECMWF is still pretty cold. You can see the majority of the ensemble members from around the 5th of March all the way to around the 10th of March are quite considerably below average, some very much below average, um, but quite a few just around that minus 4 to minus 6 area. Uh, and the average is around minus 3, minus 4. So ECMWF definitely a little, probably a little bit colder than the GFS ensembles today, um, potentially reflecting they're more in favour of holding on that easterly for a little bit longer. R lower precipitation around at that point as well, which would, of course, be symbolic of higher pressure building in. And then precipitation signal increases around the 11th of March, similar to the GFS run, with milder uh, westerly winds pushing. And you can see the right at the end extended run, right towards the end of the uh, of the ensemble runs, much, much milder. Some even get towards 10, 12 or 14 degrees at of HPA, which would produced temperatures in the 20s if we did see that so yeah some exceptional runs perhaps there right at the end but of course there are 50 uh, members of the ensemble so we're always going to see those real drastic outliers um, but yeah we'll have to keep an eye really what happens at this stage though most likely scenario is seeing that high pressure building a bit of an easterly wind break down after maybe three or four or five days and that blocking stays to our north giving application to jet stream and the current consensus around 10 to the, the 10 day 10 to 14 forecast is probably for south southwesterly winds to come in could bring a lot of rain and uh, moisture but also could bring some much milder temperatures as well and that's something we need to keep an eye on over the next uh, couple of weeks so we now do finish up the video but have a look at the uk met office run have a look at precipitation and temperature now you can see that rain heading up from the south over the course of this evening it will slowly spread northwards um but it should disintegrate a little bit as it does um and by sort of rush out to morning still a bit of rain around um so yeah some areas it will have cleared uh, as it does decrease in strength by rush hour but there's still a pulse of heavy rain within that before we see another weather front approach from the west bringing more widespread rain to western areas before eventually that weather front does move through by early hours of saturday so some areas could be raining quite uh could be raining on and off over the next three or four days really uh, many areas of central southern england perhaps towards saturday though saturday doesn't look too bad of a day but you can see that veering wind See that weather front moving northwards and eastwards, and then it moves back westwards as we do pull in easterly winds and turning to those some of those showers wintry as well. Now, if we do have a look at the upper at uh, the max temperatures, be very interesting indeed. You can see early hours of this morning, temperatures widely around freezing across Ireland and Northern England, Scotland, and say temperatures were in and around seven to ten degrees. Not nothing too bad, but generally around average. Beyond that, through Tuesday evening, widely. Uh, freezing across the north as we have clearer skies but across the south hovering around four five degrees and by wednesday in the day temperatures once again five to seven degrees so below average uh, but nothing too majorly cold and maybe the far southwest getting up to maybe 10 or 11. beyond that as we head through wednesday evening into early hours of thursday widely temperatures in around five to seven degrees not looking too bad overnight and for the daytime temperatures in and around 11, 12 in the east, but 7 or 8 under more of that precipitation. By Friday, maybe a bit of a frost overnight, and by Friday afternoon, widely 
5 to 10 degrees, and then we see that switch into the weekend. Early hours of Saturday, many are seeing frost in the north and west, where we have clearer skies, and by Saturday afternoon, temperatures are cooling down widely, 5 to 7 degrees, perhaps 8 or 9 in a few spots. And as we head forward, early hours of Sunday, you can see many areas starting to drop considerably colder. And I would expect Sunday to be a pretty chilly day indeed, widespread highs, maybe 4 to 6 degrees with those easterly winds coming in could be some wintriness around with that as well so interesting pattern coming up over the next week or so easterly wind and that does look like it will break down after maybe three to five days depending on the model uh, and the ensemble run uh, and we'll have to see exactly whether we, uh, whether we see how or exactly how cold it gets and how wintry perhaps it does get when with those upper air temperatures um getting down to minus five to minus ten wouldn't be surprised to be seeing some wintry showers in a few spots so anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.